I'm going to show you a few tricks with bullions in this one. Some of you guys were wanting more vanilla blender tutorials, and I think you might like this one. It's something that's actually easier to do in vanilla blender as opposed to using the add-ons like bull tools, hard ops, box cutter. Because a lot of times when you're doing bullions with them, they use wireframes, right, to do the bullions. But if you take a look here at my bullion shapes, they're all colored. And so uh, I'm going to kind of talk about what, how you do this anyways. And it's a nice way to visualize your booleans and also uh, setting up cutters and things like that in Vanilla Blender. We're going to go over. Uh, it's really quite simple. So it's not really anything revolutionary if you've been modeling for a little while, but it's kind of fun. So here's the thing. Uh, you're working on your shapes or whatever, and you're doing this whole number here, right? Let me call it back. It should be. Right. And we're going to do some kind of bullion. So with the add-ons, usually they turn them into wireframes. And all that is is a setting in your object properties, right? So it'd be like going here, changing viewport display to wire. So a lot of the add-ons work that way. Sometimes this is a little bit frustrating. And I found that I don't really care for it sometimes. And I actually prefer this kind of look if possible, but how do you do this? Like, how does Blender even, like, all right, it's, it's actually simple, check it out. If we're gonna make this a Boolean subtraction, for example, what we wanna do is just create a new material for it, or a Boolean, a Boolean difference, right? Um, I could go ahead and name this one, like, difference uh, two or something, all right? And just change the color here to red, and make it bright if you need to, and then copy it, Control C. Go down here to viewport display. Okay. This one we can change to red as well by just control V to copy that, right? But we can also make it transparent with alpha. Okay. And then check this out. The value, if you crank it over one, so like two or higher, just say like a three in our case, it's gonna start doing this thing. Or it's kind of glows basically. You set it to four in this case. So we know this is going to end up being a Boolean shape now, right? Now, normally, when you're creating things, in our case, it's already in this collection called cutters, but normally it'll be like in your regular collection. You just press M and you move it to a new collection. And I'll say cutters two in our case. All right. And we'll end up with something like that. And uh, I'll just put it in this one for now. But you'll do the second collection. So usually you got your, like your main meshes and then you got your cutters, something like that. So we grab our object. Now we can add the Boolean modifier. So generate Boolean. I drop, pick the object, boom. There you go, we've done a Boolean. Uh, I would say you can use any of these. Uh, float is fast. This is gonna be the most exact, obviously. And Manifold's kind of a combination of the two. It's actually pretty good. It does, Require a little bit of cleanup though. And sometimes it'll make little weird um, problems on the mesh perhaps, but they're very, usually very easy to clean up. So not that big of a deal. And so we can do that. And so now we got a Boolean subtraction and this nice red material to go with it. And it's in its second collection here. Now, so a lot of you guys end up, when you're new to Blender, you end up hitting one, two, or three on the keyboard inside of um, object mode, right? Not in edit mode. And what ends up happening is it ends up hiding stuff or something weird happens like that, right? Here's the trick with this, all right? I got it already kind of reset, configured. Normally, one will hide everything except the first collection, right? And then when you hit two, it'll hide everything but the second collection and, and do things like that, right? And to bring them back, you'd have to hit shift one or shift two is usually how it works. There's a little trick to this, though, if you want. You'll find that shift one and shift two actually work better than one and two. So when you're going to your key maps, key bindings, and you hit one, you'll find in object mode, there's these options. Normally you have one set like this. If you turn it off and you turn shift one into one, right? You do the same thing for two and three if you want. This is kind of a fun thing here now. Um, basically your keys, one will toggle on and off the first collection. Two will now toggle on and off the second collection. So if you ever move these around, it's easier to keep track of things this way, in my opinion. Right? So that's all that's happening there. 
So you just hide them real quick, bring them back, or whatever the case, one and two. If you want to do that, you can. So, but yeah, basically that's that's the trick with bullions, right? And you can do this the same for the green one here. You set it up exactly the same. If I can get a hold of it. Sometimes it's hard to select them. That's what those shortcuts are for, basically. And now we can create a material for anything that we do a union with. Just create union green, same setup. And um, there you go. So we can just hide them now. We can see this works out fairly well on this particular piece now. All right. Um, I got some empties hidden apparently, but that was for modeling these. All right, now. So we got that other way. Not everything will be able to do that, unfortunately. And it's probably not good if you do that for everything anyway. Some guys like to use booleans. And if a boolean shape has a material on it and you do a boolean into another shape and it has that material and the other materials that it has, um, it'll transfer the material, basically. The material slots, anyways. So you can actually uh, do that. But in some cases, like this little section here, you can see this shape, I want to boolean subtract this one, right? So we can still do the Boolean, but this is where things get a little bit confusing, perhaps, is sometimes you want it to do things like that. In our case, what is this shape doing? Oh, not subtraction, sorry. Uh, we might want to do union for, uh, oh, excuse me, wrong one. That's not the one we work on, this one. I am confused. Might want to do a Boolean subtraction like that okay so we'll have the shape there later on we can work with um, or we could do a union even if we wanted possibly could work out we can see it gets a little bit iffy in, in this case right um little z fighting going on there so the original shape now if we hide it you see that one we could possibly you know use the material with and do that and then just move it to the uh, cutters collection and we would never see any difference right so uh, yeah, a little tricky using booleans, but there's a couple of ideas there for you to play around with. You can definitely do that. If you're going to do any um, intersects, for example, like do a cube, let's just say we're going to intersect this one. Let's just do it on multiple objects, even. So, intersect, you might want to do yellow. Unfortunately, we won't have a good time trying to do something like hard ops and box cutter do which is um, where it like splits it into two shapes. Very hard to do that manually because it's a, uh, it's a process. You got to like do duplicates and then set up two different bullions. And it's kind of a pain to be honest, but yeah, we can still set this up basically in the same manner here. You see, so we're going to intersect now. I should name it. So, and so if you want to go this route, you could, that's all I'm trying to point out here. So if I do that boolean now, whoop. you can click and drag down to collapse multiples. Type in boolean, pick our object, it should cut it, but we want to intersect. There we go. You can see, so we can in fact intersect, and then we can do that on this one as well. Another boolean, intersect, pick our object. We'll get that going. So we move that to the uh, cutters collection. Now, see that little area that's showing up. You'll get Z fighting like this on multiple objects using the same cutters. This is actually quite a pain to clean up sometimes. Um, sometimes not so much. So, for example, if we do another Boolean, we might get away with a union and use a manifold on this one. Um, it could turn out quite well. This would once, now that's done like that, that would actually end up being a, um, a cutter as well. So you don't always necessarily assign those materials to it because it's not always needed, but something like that maybe. And so that's kind of how you can get away with doing bullions in Vanilla Blender. It's quite simple once you get used to it maybe. Um, if this is too distracting for you, you know, just use wires. You don't have to do anything other than wires, but... I like I kind of like the previews like this, right? You can always adjust, you know, how intense they are as well. You don't have to keep them super intense, really. But anyways, let's see what happened with the shape here. I'm just curious. We're going to duplicate 
the base shape, I'm going to right click, so shift D to duplicate, right click, convert to a mesh. And now if we take a look here, I want to see what happened with our Boolean, so forward slash, see how bad it is and how hard it would be to clean this up. Those, um, those new Boolean solvers are actually pretty good from my experimentation with them so far. But that doesn't mean they always get things right. Let's see, that's not bad though. And this is something that usually you struggle with inside a blender. Doing these kinds of like cuts on cuts like that are zero tolerance. And um, that manifold Boolean solver is definitely rather interesting. Although sometimes it'll create like a random vertex I found where it'll do something like this. Just, and it kind of shifts the shape just randomly in some areas. Actually, I think it did it right here, maybe. At the back of this guy. Maybe it didn't. Maybe that's supposed to be there. I was wondering where everything was. I was just zoomed in too far. All right. I don't know if that's actually supposed to be like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's catching the end of that guy. So the intersects are rather... Um, interesting. If I delete that, it all comes back. Um, anytime you delete a Boolean shape, if the Boolean is dead, it turns red. Okay, You don't need it no more if you're not using it, right? So we can get in there. We can check it real quick. Some of those pieces that we switched to cutters, you know, maybe we got to move them back. And so be it. You know, that's what's going to happen. But yeah, there you go, guys. So that's kind of the trick there with that one. If you guys want to do really complex kind of little shapes like this, you can always just Boolean them out. Remember, then this is kind of the trick to 3D modeling for a lot of stuff anyways. The sizes and proportions are more important than your topology at first. If you got to use basic primitives and lay them out and start uh, trying to work some Booleans into them to get more accurate shapes, doing things a little bit more non-destructive, that's fine. Usually, you want to create something of a sorts of like a guide or a reference mesh or something like this, a block out, a detailed block out that you are for sure going to hit your shapes and proportions before you go off trying to detail everything. Cause like um, there's little things that are nuanced. Um, like these are just slightly canted outwards. You know, these ones are going to do the same. There's going to be a slight curve in this area, all kinds of weird stuff like that going on. So you're much better working on with a semi, at least a semi destructive workflow, as opposed to trying to go in here and model everything in grave detail right off the bat because you're gonna, you're gonna hit that design especially if you're working off of a um like you don't have great reference material right and you're trying to proportionally model everything by just gauging the sizes of the different parts and pieces and components and putting them together you want to use booleans for this kind of stuff if possible um if well if you don't have to use booleans don't use them right like if you can leave things intersecting for a while that's fine get the proportions right first then try you know, maybe bullying some things together, which is at the stage I'm at now. And then I can work these later on and either rebuild a mesh around this one or retopo it or uh, clean it up and try to use it. Right. So I got different choices there on how I'm going to approach finishing this thing out. But those are, that's the case there anyways. So when you end up with shapes like this at some point, that's great. That's what you want. You want to have a much easier time. Uh, dealing with these things matter of fact this one the original mesh that came out of that by the way let's take oh we just destroyed all of our stuff anyways uh, it had that little ring there which actually wasn't a bad thing because we probably could have util utilized that if we needed it i'm not saying we did but you can use things like that if you need a shape like that perhaps right um, otherwise you know we'd have to cut forward we'd have to figure out how to make our cylinders work now and so something like that but now we got like a mismatch in vertices so this complicates the issue for like subdivision per se but standard modeling you might be okay with that you don't necessarily it might not be the end of the world of your project especially if you use like custom normals later or something but anyways i just wanted to show you guys that because i i think some of you guys might find it useful if you're not using add-ons but honestly it's a lot easier with add-ons so Everybody, you know, they want to learn vanilla Blender. They don't want to use add-ons, but there's kind of a trick with Blender. By default, it's configured 
pretty terribly in some ways and some ways it's not so bad but um it kind of slows you down forces you to think about what you're doing like if you're going to do a boolean you don't get to just get a shortcut real quick and just it happens right got to think about like how it's aligning what it's doing when you're going to add the boolean all that other fun stuff right so forces you to slow down think about what you're doing when you're combining things when you're taking them apart all that fun stuff right um some of the add-ons they just kind of um it kind of glazes over that right like that aspect like you just, you don't think about booleans no more and just something you can do instantly and as a result you kind of take them for granted sometimes it's um when you're doing vanilla blender modeling it's like it's almost like you want to avoid booleans unless you have to do them right um or they're just like absolutely needed for the the thing you're going for otherwise it just there's no point in doing them i think a lot of guys that pick up like hard ops you run into this issue where you just start work in a shape and you start doing unions and subtractions like crazy but maybe they're not all needed and you might have been better off just doing some standard modeling instead or maybe the boolean's better who knows really so it's kind of back and forth right judgment calls little judgment calls on your projects well um it's up to you ultimately and but anyway so that, yeah that's it for this video i just wanted to kind of show all that off i think it's rather interesting and uh, maybe you could put it to use and I'll see you in the next one, all right? Take care.